You've just raced down to the electronics store and gotten the latest gadget. A TV, a dishwasher, a microwave, whatever you fancy. You open up the box and rather than seeing the tech you've just bought, you begin to pull out the layers and layers of polystyrene packaging. All of which go straight into the bin and straight to landfill. We have to ask ourselves, is this a sustainable use of our resources? All our valuable finite fossil fuels being poured into these single-use products. Surely that's to be a better alternative. Introducing fungi, the miracle solution to all our problems. What if I told you that sometime in the near future, fungi could completely replace polystyrene and packaging, the insulation in our homes, and even go as far as to replace the wood in our furniture and in our walls. That's right, fungi has the potential to completely revolutionize the packaging and construction industries in New Zealand. The key to all of this lies in mycelium. You see, the mycelium in fungi is made up of a vast network of millions of tiny hyphae. These serve an important biological purpose as they secrete enzymes which break down organic material and they absorb nutrients for the fungi to grow. However, of greater interest to us is the way in which the hyphae can weave through all the crevices and nooks and crannies of organic material and bind it together to one huge mass. Essentially, the mycelium acts as nature's glue, which can be used to form blocks of any shape and any size. Now, we can exploit this property of mycelium to manufacture useful and tangible products for New Zealand. The manufacture process is deceptively simple. First, we need some sort of organic substrate, which the fungi can feed off of. This can be almost any organic material, and agricultural waste products are ideal, are ideal for this. For New Zealand in particular, we can feasibly use corn stalks and barley husks for this purpose. However, even sawdust and cardboard have been found to work. Water and mycelium are then added to this blend, and together it's placed into reusable, perforated plastic molds where it's left to grow for four to five days. In this time, the mycelium will rapidly increase in volume and eventually completely fills the mold with anything undigested forming part of the new overall structure. This soft, wet mass of fungi is then removed and heated as to harden the material and to stop the mycelium from growing any further. And we get to our final product. Voila, there it is. I know it doesn't look remarkable, but this block has the potential to address some of New Zealand's underlying problems and truly change our future. Firstly, let's look at fungi for the packaging industry. The problems associated with a heavy consumption of single-use plastic packaging needs no introduction. It is estimated that we, as a nation, consume over 352,000 tons of packaging annually, with over 40% of this going straight to landfill. Moreover, greenhouse gases are released from the production of plastics, they pollute the environment, they break down into microplastics, they kill fish and, and other animals, and so on and so on. You've heard it all before. Now, the government has already taken commendable action with the ban of single-use plastic bags. However, this is only a small step in the right direction. Expanded polystyrene, or styrofoam, is the other large culprit behind our dilemmas. It is very difficult and costly to recycle, so it's usually directed straight to landfill, as is the case in New Zealand, which accounts for over 30% of space by volume. This is where fungi packaging comes in. If we look at the properties and applications of mycelium blocks, they are a direct substitute to styrofoam and are in many ways even superior. For one, these blocks can be produced 
with just 12% of the energy input, as they are effectively self-assembling. Moreover, these blocks in themselves are fully carbon neutral. Once we are done with our packaging materials, we can simply chuck the blocks into compost, where all the organic material will return to the earth within 90 days. Essentially, fungi provides a perpetually sustainable means of packaging. This is an absolute far cry from styrofoam, which we all know can take well over 500 years to break down and festers in our landfills. Now, another less obvious benefit of replacing polystyrene is to do with health. What many people do not realize is that styrene is a carcinogen and has recently been reclassified by the World Health Organization from a potential carcinogen to a probable carcinogen. Just think about it. Polystyrene, which has probably touched all our consumer goods and which we likely see every single day, is slowly causing us cancer. We've long relied on styrene-based products for, in our everyday lives, so the switch to non-toxic mycelium-based packaging couldn't come at a better time. Surely, you're already getting an idea of the tremendous benefits that mycelium technology will bring to New Zealand, but I'm only getting started. Because you see, mycelium in packaging is simply the most basic and immediate application of mycelium, and there is significant scope for further research and development. Once we have established the infrastructure to build our packaging materials, we can vary the fungi and substrate blend to vary the properties of the final product so that they are suitable for construction. For one, mycelium blocks can be made to have excellent thermal insulation properties. These properties are measured by what is called a material's R value, with the larger the number signifying a better insulator. From the graph, we can see that the insulation effectiveness of mycelium is comparable to common alternatives, such as mineral wool, fiberglass, and our good friend, polystyrene. However, being relatively new, once you optimize the fungi and substrate blend, it is possible that mycelium supersedes these alternatives in performance and even becomes the insulator of choice for New Zealand. But that's not all. We can also create rigid and stronger materials from fungi, suitable for the construction of furniture, as well as non-structural indoor paneling, to replace traditional particle board and MDF materials. The primary binder in many of these materials is urea formaldehyde, which, like styrene, surprise, surprise, is a known carcinogen, which leaches into the air in all our homes. Luckily for us, Mycelium is a near-perfect substitute at binding together wood pulp, and the final product has favorable properties. It is partially flame-retardant, it can be termite-resistant from the high silica content in the substrate, and it can be pound-for-pound pound stronger than concrete, so it can easily withstand the wear and tear of everyday life. But hold on. You don't want to live in a house made of mushrooms with all these weird nasty spores and this weird mold growing on your walls. Fair enough. But let me assure you again that the mycelium is completely killed and denatured during the manufacture process. So even if exposed to optimal growing conditions, the mycelium will not grow. Hence, there will be nothing to produce spores and hence nothing to worry about. Okay. So I've really talked about the benefits of this technology to New Zealand. But the key question is, is mycelium economically viable? And the short answer is yes, absolutely. We need to take just one glance at the numbers to see the size of the markets that we're dealing with here. Every year, the world produces over 14 million tons of styrofoam. Every year, New Zealand consumes over 352 thousand tons of packaging, as I've already mentioned. Every year, over 33,000 homes are built in New Zealand and almost 1 million cubic meters of particle and fiber board are produced domestically. 
speaking objectively, there's ample opportunity to commercialize the manufacture of mycelium blocks. We can create super factories to meet all our packaging and building material needs, and hence create hundreds of blue collar jobs for a local economy. Moreover, we could oversee the operations 100% locally, which is good from a quality control standpoint, especially for our building materials. C currently, fungi blocks are only slightly more expensive than the polystyrene and wooden equivalents. So setting up large factories now will reap long-term cost savings for New Zealand businesses, especially with the prices of petroleum earmarked to rise in the future as it gets more scarce. And finally, we come to the limitations. Surely that's to be something bad about mycelium, right? Well, I don't think long and hard about any flaws, and it does come with only one real caveat, the production time frame. The fungi obviously takes time to grow, so no matter how much we optimize production processes, it will always take at least a few days to make, and likely lo longer for larger and more complex structures. Moreover, while it's growing, it takes up large amounts of shelf space. This is, of course, not to say that we cannot produce large quantities of mycelium panels, but that we just need a lot of space, infrastructure, and hence investment to do so. And you know what? That's literally the only challenge we face, production time, and it's easily overcome. <laughs> Whatever, for what we're getting in return, Adopting mycelium products into our everyday lives seems like a no-brainer. We'll create hundreds of jobs. We'll, we'll lower costs for local businesses. We'll reduce our carbon emissions. And we'll create cleaner and safer environments for all to enjoy. So what are we waiting for? Fungi is the future. Thank you. Kira Nathan, um, the photos of the mycelium blocks, where, where were those photos taken? Where is this happening? Um, yeah, so these photos were from a startup in um, America called Ecovative. Uh, I think there's three large companies that are currently doing this technology and two are in the States and one is in Scandinavia. And of the 352,000 tons of packaging that we use in New Zealand, how much of that do we import and how much do we make ourselves? Um, I don't have exact figures for that, but I can tell you that a lot of the polystyrene products we have in New Zealand, they import the raw styrene beads into New Zealand and they expand them uh, in, here lo locally to produce the products. How, why would it be better to use uh, the fungi product than wool in insulation? Well, the thing about fungi is that it's a lot less intensive to make because even with wool, you're going to be having large scale like uh, farms, which obviously has its environmental impacts. With fungi, we can just create them in factories and it grows relatively quickly and it can meet demand uh, quite easily. And when you say it could create hundreds of jobs, yeah. are you suggesting that the people who are already working on the existing system would would transfer? I mean, they'd no longer be needed, so you'd have new jobs? Yeah, um, I believe that once you transfer, let's say, the displaced, uh, the particle board producers and also the uh, plastic producers, once you put them together, uh, you'd get large factories. So some of them would come over, but I think the operation would become so big you to create more jobs as well. And these startups that you've mentioned that are existing at the moment, are, are, they, are they flourishing? Uh, yep, yeah. so um, Ecovative, the one I've, uh, in the photos, is probably the biggest one. It's been having deals with Dell and Ikea right now, so they're really trying to grow, but they haven't come to the New Zealand market. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>